Okay, so we're going to talk about uh, when the wheels fall off, uh, when the upgrade fails. I'm going to turn that off. And so when the upgrade fails, and now what we're going to be talking about in this session, you could apply the same uh, information to a task sequence as well. So this is going to be a kind of universal because one of the things I found as I've, I'm talking with customers is we're really good at those coming from a config man background. We're really good at reading the logs and we know how to get in there and tear through these config man logs. But when a Windows in place upgrade, that's not ten, that doesn't isn't what you're going to see very much. Of. You'll see maybe some some stuff about a task sequence if you're using that. But once Windows setup happens and that upgrade starts, uh, there's very little in the config man log. So we're going to be looking at, OK, now what? Uh, how do I learn this new world of, of in-place upgrades? All right, so the first thing is to understand the process. And this uh, slide is, is really, I think, just summarizes it all for, for everyone. And if you get a screenshot of this, whatever, put it on your wall. As you're start, starting to understand what feature updates are, uh, this just diagrams it out so very nicely. So the down level phase, that's the time where you're able to, the users can still use their machine. Um, they can continue to do all this. Um, the, the Windows setup that has started the auto upgrade in the background is doing all of these things right here. This compat checks, gather operations, running your pre-install command if you have one, downloading dynamic updates, using DISM to mount all of this and, and, and put it in place. And then there's a pre-commit file right before that first reboot. And one of the things too I'd like people to think about is the complexity that is happening during this whole process. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's not the same as a build, right? Where we start from scratch and we just lay it down all the bits. We're actually uh, taking the, we're creating a new operating system on top of an operating system that is already running. So if you watch the logs, uh, and when the when the upgrade starts, it's just really fascinating to see how it's using some of the things that you may be familiar with, depending on your depth of knowledge of of DISM and setup and such like that. You'll see that the operating system actually come together piece by piece. Uh, so I'm going to go over each of these a little bit more in depth, just so you're familiar. So down level phase, as I mentioned, uh, this is running on the source OS. Very important all of your security products and such are active and working. Your proxies are in effect. Everything is happily doing what it normally does. And your, your uh, security products especially might get kind of excited about all of this file activity that they're seeing. So you need to keep that in mind. So then we reboot, that's the first reboot. And at this phase, um, it's just like WinPE. So if you're familiar with during a build and you get your laying down that WIM during WinPE, that's what's happening here. So you can use the same uh, techniques that you use for WinPE to do any troubleshooting here. Uh, so, stuff that you'll see here tends to be hardware related, firmware, definitely firmware and also disk encryption. You'll see the problems uh, pop up here related to that. First boot phase, okay, again, they're seeing the, the little dots uh, swing on by there. Uh, don't see too many errors here. Um, again, device drivers can pop up as, as an issue and you can disconnect things to kind of troubleshoot that if you like, but this is not, I don't typically see a lot of errors in this section. And the second boot phase, now we're back to the new operating system running. And again, all of your stuff that is active is now active again. Uh, so all of your security products, filter drivers, there's a very common uh, boot failure. So I do see a lot of problems in this last phase um, as, as well. Uh, again, you, if you needed an, uh, anything that was uh, not caught in the uh, as a hard block, if it is a hard block, you'll see it uh, fail in this step because again, you're running in your brand new version of the operating system. The old one has been set aside. All right, here's a couple of my tips to reduce having any sorts of problems whatsoever during upgrades. Reduce the number of user profiles. If you have machines that are shared and have like a hundred so profiles on it, they will take forever to upgrade because each one of those goes 
profiles gets moved to the new operating system. So consider uh, cleaning up old profiles uh, as, as, as part of getting ready. Uh, outdated firmware. If you've never updated the firmware on your machines, in the new modern world of, of Windows 10, you need to be updating those BIOS. And it's a much better flow than it used to be in the old days where you hated to touch it. Uh, but all the vendors have automated approaches in which you can do that. I suggest separating that separately from your upgrades. Uh, think of it more as like a monthly servicing uh, that you would be doing. Also, the more current your Windows updates are on your machine, the better your upgrade is going to be because any sort of fixes and such are going to be in those cumulative updates that you're taking every month. So the more up-to-date the machine, the happier it's going to be during the upgrade. And then assessing your environment. We saw a little bit about that earlier, desktop analytics uh, and, and things like that are all um, tools that you can use to identify uh, where you may have problems ahead of time. All right, and then this is again, engage with your security teams. I talked to a lot of customers and everybody has their own little world and the security team is a different one. Talk to them, let them know that you're about ready to upgrade all of these machines and what's going to be happening. Uh, these are some recommended exclusions that you can make that will make the upgrade run much faster, especially if you have a lot of security products, especially the more advanced ones. Think of your Cloud Strikes, your Silence, your uh, Carbon Black, those kinds of ones. Uh, can get pretty tricky and your security team will know how to do appropriate exclusions and may have tools that can be run during an upgrade to see where that security product may be interfering. Uh, so, all right, so the answer is always in the logs, right? And that's, and that's true here, but it's a different set of logs. And the best place to start is Setup Diag. Setup Diag is a utility, it's been mentioned before. You can download it from Microsoft. Uh, and then it's now part of, of 2004, always run it verbose. Um, you'll see here once I show you these, these files, it just gives you a lot of information. It doesn't seem to take any more time and these files don't get any bigger by running it in verbose. So these are some switches that I highly recommend uh, for, for people to use uh, and to just think about saving these logs if you can save them off on a network share, similar to a lot of people do that with their, their build logs, if you can have that kind of workflow with these, that's a great way to uh, be able to analyze your failures. Because a lot of times, especially these days, uh, if you're uh, chasing a laptop that may be anywhere on or off the network from work from home, if you can somehow get those logs uh, stashed somewhere, uh, then you'll be able to, to really be able to diagnose quicker. Quicker. All right, so logs to analyze. All right, number one tip, don't use CM trace. <laughs> Windows, with the Windows world does not CM trace friendly and it, they're just too big. And then they will just, uh, if you've probably all been there and tried it and it just uh, is, is a very, very slow process. Notepad actually works pretty well. So bring them on in uh, to there and you can, I'll show you some, some filtering and such here in a minute. But uh, these are the logs that you want to be paying attention to. Uh, the ones with the stars set up ACT and set up air log are collected by setup diag and nicely bundled into a zip file for you. Then there's some additional logs that you may want to go and look at uh, to get some additional information. If you're if setup diag is not um, able to provide you the information, like if it comes back and says, eh, I don't know why it failed, unknown. That's when you start to turn to these logs here. And I also like to point out event logs. So set up, uh, so, excuse me, the, your system log and your application log, a lot of times can provide insight into uh, what's going on with the upgrade outside of just the setup ACT log. All of your um, uh, uh, error codes for the, this, the uh, upgrade will, will be logged in this in the system log. So that's another place to look. And I say that right there. So that, and, and again, check with your, if you have a lot of third party security products, you know who you are, check with your security teams if they have some additional logging that they can turn on to do some testing uh, prior to rolling out into production. Uh, yeah, I see in the about one trace. One trace is better with the logs, but it still chokes kind of uh, 
uh, a lot. I've actually been playing with the PowerShell, like using Git content and piping it to uh, out grid view. Is there some filtering there? Uh, but still, any, any sort of log viewer that can handle a big, big log is your best shot for looking at these setup ACT logs. All right, a uh, couple things that setup Diag collects that are useless. So all of this stuff that's compat data.xml, don't look at it. it. You will just waste time. Uh, th there will be showing things like hard blocks and such. It, ignore it. it. It's not really happening. You know how sometimes there's errors in config man logs that aren't actual errors that you need to chase? Same thing with these. Just ignore them. Don't even open them. Key takeaway right there. Make a note. <laughs> All right, so let's look at a couple setup logs here. So I always like to have one that uh, you run a successful upgrade on to go ahead and collect that uh, setup diag from. And, and keep in mind, you can run setup diag anytime until the uh, OS cleans up the old operating system. So that's typically 10 days unless you've made some changes. Uh, so uh, if you've got a machine that's upgraded recently, you'll be able to run setup diag against it and pull the information. So this happens to be a, a um, one that succeeded, and it's going to give you all sorts of information about machine and your model, um, your bias, all of this good stuff, filter drivers, what AV is running. And these are really important, right? You've already seen this of uh, when the upgrade starts and when it finishes in the elapsed time. But here's where it gets really great when you run verbose is that you remember my diagram with all those little pieces? Well, most of a lot of those pieces are outlined here with timestamps. And that's what's going to help you move through that setup ACT log. Find where maybe you have a really long running um, uh, section. That's the, the part that you can go into that setup ACT log and see why it's taking an hour for this upgrade to finish because it's spending 45 minutes in this one particular section. Uh, so this is, uh, breaks it down into really granular. Uh, the whole uh, time delta and operation ended, you'll, you may see some strange results sometimes. Um, uh, so you just take that as, as it is. Uh, but the beginning timestamps are, are, are real treasure and take advantage of those if you've got to hunt through logs. So I'm going to scroll, scroll, scroll because you can see just how much activity is happening. And then we get to the bottom and you get more of a summary and the, the different phase levels. Uh, so this is, is kind of, this is, I believe, what they tattoo into the registry. Uh, so again, a very helpful thing. And then when you have a failure, and you find a failure here. Um, so it tells you that the rollback failed and what phase that it was in. It gives you the actual error code. And in my resource slide, there are links to our docs, um, the Windows setup docs, and you can actually decode this. Uh, and I'm not gonna take the time to do it today, but you just follow the docs. It's in the advanced uh, areas of the upgrade troubleshooting, and you can get exactly what that means. Um, but again, it shows you at what part, like how far did it get before we had the failure? And you can scroll down through this and, and, uh, and find this sort of thing. So these are precious and always look for those. And that's why so many people automatically run it. And now that it's built into the, um, the product, that's even better. And, uh, and you can kind of investigate and see what's going on. All right, so I think I beat setup diag to death here. All right, so let's talk about this setup ACT log. It is intimidating, it is big. You've probably never looked at it much, but it has been around for years. It's part of the Windows setup process. So if you were to get the, the ISO and start an install, you'll, you will have a setup ACT log uh, as a result of that. Um, and we're doing the same thing, because remember, we are building a new operating system while the old one is running. So Windows setup is, is running, and that's why you're not seeing very much information in the configuration manager logs, because config man hands it off to Windows setup and Windows setup takes over. Uh, so that's really important um, to think about uh, when you're uh, troubleshooting why you have either some long running upgrades or one upgrades that are failing. All right, so here are my cheat sheets. This is what I've learned um, 
through uh, looking at my customers' logs and such and, and trying to help understand. I have some favorite strings that I search for in the logs. So the operations recap is, again, lines out what happened, start times and stop times, whether it finished or not. So in this particular one, you can see it got all the way to the stop suspended services and did not, it didn't reboot. So it, it failed um, going into the, uh, the WinPE, the Win, WinRE section. A uh, couple tips again, don't use CM Trace. Open up uh, Notepad. This is actually a, a, a screenshot directly from Notepad. It lines up beautifully into a table if you stretch it out and turn off Word Wrap. So look for that. And the other important thing is this operations recap happens many times throughout the, the upgrade process. So jump down to the bottom of the log file and then search up from there and you will find the last one that the last recap that was done. And it will also give you these nice little search strings that you can then search on within the log to find what you're looking for. All right, and here's some other ones that are just kind of favorites of mine to help me understand what's happening uh, behind the scenes. So uh, when I search in the log for setup host initialize command line, this exact uh, syntax, I will get the full command line that setup.exe is running. So you can see that here, all of these, you know, install, update, quiet, where the install file is, um, then, you know, dynamic updates was enabled, uh, not, it's not going to be showing Ubi, that's set for you. Um, telemetry, the priority that it's running, if they turned on the ignore the warnings of the compat scan, what bit locker, if that's being set to, to uh, always uh, suspend. Uh, again, this is, this is where you'll see uh, if you've got some syntax problems in your setup INI file, or you uh, maybe you're directing to the wrong place, this might surface here. So this is a great place to check what your command lines are doing. Profiles, as I said, the more profiles you have on the machine, the longer it's gonna take, because you'll see this processing profiles. And in this particular case, there were three user profiles. And keep in mind, it's not, it, it, depending on how your help desk works and the way that they're logging into machines, uh, that could be creating additional profiles on, on, on your machines. And again, we'll slow down the, the process. So consider that uh, and, and look for that, and that can help understand uh, what's going on. All right, and then, right, we've talked a lot about dynamic updates, how much content's getting downloaded from the internet. Search on this, Mo Setup Platform uh, colon package, and you will find these, they're not all, together, but uh, you'll find each package and the install size of, of each one. Uh, so you can see exactly what's being downloaded. So on this one, the only feature on demand that needed to be downloaded was the, uh, the .NET. Uh, so you've got all these KVs, you can look them up in the update history, start to learn what's happening, what your machines are choosing to pull down. Uh, if you're dealing with languages and you want to know the whole compat thing, uh, this is a great string time uh, to search for. And then last boot time. So if you're looking to identify when the, the boots happened within that setup ACT log, uh, you will find them uh, with that with that uh, search string. So this isn't documented anywhere. This is just stuff I've learned over the time, um, but we'll have that in the, the slides to make available for you. Another very common mistake that I see or error that I see is uh, if you search in the setup ACT log, cancel of current task requested. And this happens when SCCM cancels the operation. Oh, I should change that to endpoint manager there. Sorry about that. Uh, and typically the upgrade has exceeded the amount of time. So if you go into your feature updates, just like your software updates, uh, you've got uh, a, a way to configure this. And if you have slow drives, lots of profiles, lots of security products, 120 minutes is often not enough time um, because that's going to include that down level time as well. So you may want to bump this up because you may not care how long it runs just as long as it finishes. Uh, so consider that if you're seeing this in your logs, you'll know right away that uh, you ran out of, uh, of time and, and you'll actually see that timestamp. It'll be exactly two hours from when that task sequence started, so. Okay. Adam, you're up.
You're on mute, Adam. Of course I am. Of course I am. I'm always on mute. It's how I roll. Uh, OK, hey, I opened my own copy. Um, mm -hmm. So let's see if this works. Hey, all right, we're good. Um, all right, so we're talking native data still a little bit, uh, and uh, this ties in a little bit with the the reporting. But um, one of the one of the things that you know I don't know that a lot of folks realize is a, is a thing here, but the feature update exit codes get written into uh, your monitoring node. So just just like you would monitor any other deployment, you can come into the console and you can um, check on the status of your your updates. The um, challenge here is that Config Manager does not have the um, lookup engine. Honestly, I'm not sure that anyone at Microsoft has the lookup engine for the exit codes from feature updates because, um, I mean, geez. But uh, they uh, set up DAG actually does, um, but it has a pile of rules that it runs to figure out what that code is and things. And so um, there is a formula for going out to, if you go to the setup DAG site, you can go and piece this together and sort of figure out where this died. But ultimately, uh, start here in your monitoring uh, node, uh, and you can see um, the status of your deployments just here. And you could quickly, without looking at anything else on the device, you quickly figure out, OK, what do I need to do here? So for instance, um, this one, uh, hey, Bruce, you're on the line. Hey, Bruce, thanks for this one. This is, I remember when Bruce first encountered this one, he figured out what the what the error was. Um, but you get this occasionally where it says, no logged on interactive user was there. And it's like, what the heck is that? Well, got a CI, also included on the GitHub repo, thanks, Bruce, that will um, detect this exit code on a device and auto remediate it, which is involves like deleting the software distribution share and restarting the uh, update service. But so you could potentially start figuring out, okay, what's the remediation path for these and build CIs that auto remediate these, uh, re remediate these things, at least in cases where it's possible. Um, this one, this seems like a pretty easy one to go address. Hey, not enough disk space. Also, this really should be one of those ones that we had a prereq check in on our collection or something to prevent this from ever starting on here. Um, even us, we still have some some work to do in our environment. Um, all right, so um, I mentioned that I would cover this. So this is um, a combination of the setup diag custom inventory that we do as well as the deployment information. So just the, the, the screen we we're just looking at, the monitoring node, this is that same information that we get from there. Um, this hex code is, is kind of cobbled together because it doesn't natively render in the database that way. Um, but you can see uh, how, you know, how you can now take all this data and you can combine it together. And you could say, all right, well, let me find, if I'm looking at my deployment, let me find a particular uh, error code that I want to look at. And I can filter that, and then all of the other um, pieces will filter down. And so setup diag told me that this is the detailed record for that failure. And so I should be able to go and look this up and figure out, all right, so this one's not a very descript descriptive. And what I'm finding in my environment, most of my errors appear to be this abrupt download um, down level failure. And so they seem to, you know, these are kind of weird um, uh, error messages. It's, you kind of need to go look at the client, dig through the logs on those. But some of the other ones, like so, compat um, uh, application uh, or compat blocked application dismissible. That's a dismissible compat warning. So I ignore these because we've got this, the flag in setup config I and I to ignore dismissible compat warnings. But if you didn't have that flag in setup config and you saw this, you would want to go and probably add that to setup config or address and update that driver. So um, as you can see, they, you know, I've got a bunch of these uh, abrupt failures. But um, uh, anyway, the data is here. And you can, you can now um, you know, link these up together. I can give you all the, uh, you can you know, filter it down by the assignment name. Um, I'm currently using resource IDs because that's not uh, device ID information. And that's, that's not computer names. Um, so but when I, when I publish this out for you guys, I, I'm going to actually put computer names and allow you to be able to drill through to a detail table to get, actually give you information about the device. Um, so anyway, this is just for demo purposes. But um, I added some stuff here where it actually breaks out your extended code from the uh, 
from this error message where possible. So if there is an extend code, you can pull this. And um, what I mean by the extend code, I don't know if you've seen that, but so if we go to the setup diag page, that's all, this is where I always start. And um, if you go into upgrade error codes, there's a whole process for, and, and these are links at the end of the slide deck. Um, there's a process for figuring out, piecing this stuff together to figure out maybe where it died. You have to kind of go and take bits and pieces of this and go look it up in the on the NT status pages and things. Um, so it's a little bit complex, but read the docs. Um, it, you'll figure it out. Posted, it's, Mario's um, posted some great screenshots of the decoding process. Kind of one picture shows it all. Couple, oh, awesome. Perfect. Things. Great. So I'll move on from that then. Um, so so that's, you know, picking up setup DAG info, digging through, debugging that information. So it's really just a bunch of detective work. Um, you know, make a, make a list of, as you figure out what that error code is, make a list and see if you know, you know, make yourself a knowledge base. I don't know of one that exists out there today. It'd be great if there was. Um, but anyway, it, it, it's a process. It's not just, oh, yeah, this just, this just works. But, you know, it's a thing you have to deal with. All right. Another issue that we that we ran into was uh, I was trying to do uh, I was trying to upgrade my boss's computer to um, 2004, and he has a Surface Pro 7, and we kept getting this error, and this was just just ridiculously infuriating because it was like this is nondescript. It doesn't give me any details. That's all I'm getting. We tried to go sort it out. Like nothing was obvious, and um, ended up digging in to his his logs. Uh, in the um, Panther logs on the machine. And we found this actionable report, which if you ran from the ISO, this would be a message that you would see as a, as a user. Hey, your, your PC is not supported. Well, this is a result of a, a, a setup block that's in the Compat appraiser database uh, that gets run. And this, this is part of your telemetry and, and all that sort of stuff that happens on your machine. And what you do is there is a, I, I suggest you get, just like we used to tell you to get the last compat uh, XML, one of these guys, ignore those because um, as Julie um, mentioned, they, they are not helpful at all when it comes to things that aren't included in this block because you end up chasing this stuff and it's rarely these. And this one is is in the end of this line here. It's um, the, uh, the block is a hard block. Oh, sorry, the, I got word wraps messing with me here. So each one of these has a, a, a compatibility um, scan that they did and then the, the uh, blocking type on it. And if I scroll over, uh, come on, it's messing with me. Blocking type, anyway, it says hard block at the end there, there somewhere, just trust me. It's, it's hardware type generic and then hardware hard block, there it is. Um, uh, blocking type hard. And then that's it. It's like, well, okay, this log doesn't have anything. And digging it, digging, 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 figured out that this human readable file gives you a clue, but only works on some types of blocks. So I said, all right, well, here it is, uh, or this is this is one of the blocks. So it was like OneDrive and legacy filters. Um, ultimately, I wrote a module to help us with this. So if you get to this point and you specifically, if you see this actionable report, you've probably got a setup block that you need to go look at. And instead of trying to dig through this and sort it out, go install, go run these commands, install module fu dot YMI block. FU <laughs> stands for feature update, I promise. Um, and uh, go install that module. It's on the uh, PowerShell gallery. And if you've installed it at some point, go get an, go reinstall it because it's version 1.008 uh, is available. I've made some enhancements to it. Ultimately, you can, you can run it. Just without, uh, just on a machine, as it's directly on a machine, you can run it remotely, or you can collect the logs like I did and uh, run it um, standalone. And so what it does is it parses through, actually, so it parses through all of the logs, um, and uh, then it compares that information to the compatibility appraiser database that it that the machine used to create the block, and um, creates a nice output for us. And so you can come in here and. So I've got two different ones I'm running. So one's the a OneDrive block and one's a, um, uh, a Surface Pro block. So this is the OneDrive block. So this is that same stuff we were just looking at in the human readable. So it kind of broke it out into a nice thing. But then it's like, well, what is this? We couldn't figure out where this was. Like, what what's causing this block? So it runs through the compatibility appraiser database and it looks 
And if I go look in this file here, it tells me the exact um, thing that it's seeing on the machine that's causing the block. So my machine happened to have this registry key with uh, first run equals one um, on it. And then it creates a block type of a three. And now, now you're stuck. You can't, you, it's, it's a setup block. Um, so fortunately, some of them come with these guys. So if you see in these uh, logs, you see this bypass block upgrade, you can inject this registry key into your registry and it will, and then run again and you are clear, you'll go through, you'll, you'll uh, bypass the block. Now, if you've got a hardware block, you might not wanna do that because there could be something actually causing the issue uh, that you, you know, they put the blocks in for a reason, so don't, don't just bypass it. But um, I also generate these, um, uh, an auto or uh, easy import uh, registry key that you can just import uh, there's a bug with this, right? So you might want to check it before you use it. But um, anyway, it, so you could, it, it's a whole thing. It, um, the, I've got I've got a ridiculously long blog post about this um, that we'll link to as well. But I just want to show you this last one here on the uh, matches. So this is the one with the service pro block. And so this was nice because it was, it's really obvious. Okay, so this is, it's definitely blocked because of the service pro. Um, and what's cool is you can bypass that block too. So I gave this to my boss and said, hey, put this on your machine. And we did, and we immediately went through. So um, so this is kind of a, uh, it just depends on your environment and, and where you're at on this stuff. Um, if you're using desktop analytics, you generally should not run into this type of deal because uh, DA is going to use the same stuff we're looking at, the compatibility appraiser database information uh, it's processing that information and creating a go no go list. And um, in this particular case, we were trying to not use DA to do this and um, just go. But unfortunately, even even DA doesn't give you the detail. It just says one drive and known folder move. Uh, it's like, well, well, what is that? Why? How do I bypass this? I want to I want to just take the risk and, and go through, and it wouldn't let us. So. Anyway, that's a, a beat that dead horse probably enough. The um, uh, ultimately, you know, this is this takes a fair amount of detective work, but I think it takes, you know, the same amount of work it would take you to debug a task sequence, and in fact, you're still going to end up at the same place here. You still have to debug why Windows setup failed on the machine. So all of the stuff we just talked through here is still applicable even if you're just using task sequences. If you wrap all this stuff in a task sequence, you also have to debug why the task sequence is failing um, because you're going to, because inevitably you're going to try to wrap in your office upgrade and your security software upgrades and all of your other, all of your other things because, well, we only want to reboot the user one time. Well, don't you reboot them every month for security updates anyway? Just um, decouple deploy feature updates by themselves and um, just learn to love digging through logs because it's just it's just the way it is. There's too many ways that this stuff can go wrong, too many environmental failures to just say, well, Microsoft should just magically figure this out for us. Eh. They give you all the information. I've only once found a machine where I hit a block that I just could not get through. And I think if I had not accidentally wiped out the machine during my testing, uh, I probably uh, would. I know more now, and I think I probably could have could have gotten through it. Um, anyway, at the end of the slide, we've got the links to uh, all the resources and things, so we'll send those out. And I went just a little bit over, Julie. I'm sorry, I got excited.